Good evening and a very warm welcome to evening prayer on Sunday the 21st of June, the second Sunday after Trinity. Tonight's psalm is Psalm 48 and our reading which is going to be read by Carolyn is taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10 verses 24 to 39 and Joan will be leading us in our prayers. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praises forever. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says, this saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John says, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. That we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ, rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and our minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 48 Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion is the far north, the city of the great king. Within its citadels, God has shown himself a sure defence. Then the kings assembled, they came on together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic, they took to flight. Trembling took hold of them there. Pains as of a woman in labour. 
as when an east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God establishes forever. We ponder your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your name, O God, like your praise, reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go all around it, count its towers, consider well its ramparts, go through its citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God for ever and ever. He will be our guide for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Magnificat My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We now hear the Gospel reading from Matthew's Gospel, read by Carolyn. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground, apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies 
will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his way will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Tonight's reading is a difficult one. The breaking up of families, not bringing peace to this world, but division and a violent sword. And in light of our ongoing recent news, we might be forgiven for taking a step back when we hear Jesus comparing the life of discipleship to being a slave. It's hard listening. The message seems so out of character for Jesus. Jesus who proclaims good news to the poor and who brings freedom for the oppressed. Jesus who commands us to love our neighbours as ourselves, to welcome the stranger, to feed the hungry, to care for those who are sick and the one who sought to tear down walls, walls that marginalise and he risked his life so that the world might be saved. Taken literally and out of context, these words are out of character for Jesus. They contradict who he really is and what he is all about. So we need to look a little closer at them to understand what Jesus really meant. Just last week, Jesus commissioned his disciples to continue his work in the world. And today we hear Jesus telling the disciples about what it actually means to be a disciple. To bring the good news of Jesus out of the dark and into the light. And not just to whisper Jesus' good news to those who are willing to hear it, but to proclaim it loud for all to hear. No matter how it might be received and no matter what the response. Jesus gives the disciples a sharp warning about what they are likely to face when they go out into the world. And it's not pretty. Just before today's passage, Jesus has said to his disciples, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. Beware of those who will hand you over to the councils and flog you in the synagogues. You will be dragged before governors and kings because of me. People will hate you because of my name. Some of you will be betrayed even by those whom you love. Even brothers will betray brothers. Fathers will betray children. And children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. Why, we might ask. Well, it's because Jesus' good news is subversive and it disrupts. It challenges the status quo and is a threat to the empire and to those who hold power in it. And when there is good news, there is always going to be those who resist it and often with force. Being a disciple of Jesus is risky. And this is what Jesus is warning his disciples about, and all of us, in this evening's reading. Because to be Jesus' disciple is to choose to speak as Jesus speaks. To make peace in this world as Jesus, the Prince of Peace, makes. This is a peace that is not about making sure that everyone is happy and being careful not to ruffle any feathers. No, Jesus didn't come here to keep the peace. Rather, he came here to make peace. A kind of peace 
that is quite dangerous and for Jesus and his earliest disciples would bring about the sword from those who found it threatening. Jesus came here to make peace that will end up causing divisions, even amongst those close family members and friends. A kind of peace that will bring about Facebook wars and Twitter trolls, uncomfortable discussions around the dinner table and changed relationships. Because to Jesus, when there is no justice, there is no peace and how this resonates with us today. Justice does not always win the seat of power. But have no fear, Jesus urges us, for nothing is covered up that will not eventually be uncovered and nothing secret that will not eventually become known. In other words, the truth will truly set us free. So we should not fear that those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. We should not fear those who will lash out at us for bringing truth to the light and proclaiming Jesus' good news. We should not let our fear of what others will think of us or how they will respond to us from holding us back, from making Jesus' kind of peace in this world. Instead, Jesus urges us only to worry about how God sees us, and that is as loved and cherished. So, Jesus concludes, take up the cross and follow me. Those who will find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Jesus is not saying that anyone who follows him must stop. Stop taking care of themselves or must give up their creativity or their unique identity or deny who God created them to be. Nor is Jesus glorifying or condoning abuse, injustice or human suffering. Jesus is actually saying quite the opposite. He's saying that as followers, we must deny our old selves. Our old selves that makes the gospel centred on us, whilst marginalising others. We must deny our constant desire to have power over others. We must stop trying to save our egos by striving always to be first, to be the most successful, to have the biggest home, to be the most faithful. We must give up our need to always be liked by everyone. You see, we often try to conform God in the way in which we want God to be. We make God in our own image. We speak for God with our own interests and needs in mind. But the reality is that we were made in God's image, not the other way around. And when we start to deny our old self-centered selves and take up our cross, we actually become more human. We stop reflecting our views of self and we actually allow ourselves to reflect the image and love of God in Christ. And for the early disciples, the cross represented death. To take up our cross means that something must die in order for new life to come about. The old has gone and the new must come. To follow Jesus and take up our own cross means that we must follow Jesus's way of the cross, a way of love that proclaims peace and justice for all God's children a way that sees the image of God in our neighbours and in ourselves. To take up the cross means we will speak up against any and all forms of hate, 
on social media, in our workplaces, in our schools, with our families and friends, and in our communities and in our country. To take up the cross means that we will stand with people who are different from us. To take up the cross means that we will listen to their stories, sit with them in their sufferings, welcome them into our homes, into our church, and join them in their fight for justice, especially when we know that we will face resistance because of it. And I think that this is what Jesus was trying to convey in this passage from Matthew. To follow Jesus and to take up the cross means we must live our lives putting God first, others second, and ourselves last. Because God's peace expects justice. God's peace asks for righteousness. God's peace demands value for and regard for all. And it is God's peace that will save us all. Amen. The Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the light and the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And we affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Joan will now lead us in this week's prayers. Let us pray. Let's take a little time now to talk to Jesus, who knows all about us and still loves us, who's with us no matter what's happening, and who tells us to ask him for the things we need. We pray for those people who have power to change the world, to change the very fabric of our lives, who have told us where we can and can't go, where we can, what we can and can't do, whose decisions mean the difference between life and death. Lord, we pray that they may make good decisions for the long and the short term. May they be good examples find the right words, and listen to your voice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose lives have been so badly affected by COVID-19. Those who have lost loved ones. Those who have lost their jobs. Those who have lost their business. Those who sit alone with no one to visit them or phone them. No one to brighten their day and share with them. Give us the will and the stamina to help where we can. And may the knowledge of your loving care help to heal 
broken hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those on fire with love of God, for those whose hearts are ablaze with passion for Jesus, and for those, quietly and unseen, who are committed to working for you and praying for others. Tonight we pray especially for Louise, who was our vicar and is now our area dean. We pray for Frida Carey, our missionary partner in Pakistan. We pray for Mark, our curate. We pray for Carolyn, our lay reader. Lord, help them with their work. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Fill their hearts with praise as, with us, they serve you during this time when we're without a vicar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we find ourselves living in a time of great and fast change, easy to get confused, easy to get upset easy to get afraid and worried but we pray that we may use it as a time of opportunity may we use every opportunity it offers us may we actively look for new ways to express our love for you and your love for us may we not be hampered by fear or laziness or refusal to make changes to come to grip with the grip with the new realities Lord, we ask that our priorities may be your priorities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let's just take a moment for our own individual prayers, knowing that Jesus hears each and every one of us. Lord, we put ourselves and our prayers in your hands. You who take note of every little sparrow and every hair on our heads, as it were. Just as nothing is too great for you, so nothing is too small for you to care about. So hear our prayers for Jesus' sake. Amen. The Collect for today. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And we join together in singing the words of our Vesper Blessing. May God's blessing surround you each day As you trust Him 
and walk in His way. May His presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. May God's blessings surround you tonight as you trust Him and walk in His light. May His presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.